Tomato 4. Let's start. In the previous tomato, we replaced the generic type from router to quiz delegate. Yes. So there's a bunch of things we can do now. We can rename this generic type or we can fix the warning. Okay, since we're in this file, it bugs me. So can we please <laughs> just rename that to delegate? Yes. We can refactor this with Xcode. Okay, I didn't know that. <laughs> delegate. It's more descriptive. Exactly. To be fair, I didn't like R. I think we call it R because we didn't know what to call yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> okay, delegate it is. So a couple more things that I can detect here. In line 11, we have a router that is of type delegate. Now we can rename that to delegate. Right. And then line 16, also in the initializer, we have router. Okay. This router in the initializer is going to affect other files as well. Well, we can change everything internal and we change the other one in a separate commit. What do you think about that? Yes, exactly, exactly. That's the best, I think. So let's use Xcode to help us. Let's call this delegate. Yes. Okay. Now, what about the name of this function here? Route2. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a good one. I mean, we can follow the convention we opted to choose in the test and call it delegate question handling. That makes sense. Delegate question handling. Yes, I like that. Being consistent. Okay. And line 35, route to question. So this is pretty much the same. Delegate question handling. Let's run all the tests. It's private. You shouldn't break anything. If I look for route, okay, that's the only thing we have here. Perfect. But this will break some code outside this class, so... Yes, yes. Okay, let's commit first then. Renamed symbols to clarify intent. Make sense? Yes. So now I cannot just rename the router here by selecting the label. Yeah, the name parameter. I need to select the init yeah. to be able to refactor. And now I can call delegate. And as you can see, it's also going to change all the call sites as well. Exactly. And all those types changes are internal. We are not breaking clients of this framework. Mm -hmm. Let's just prove this. Internal, private, and it's in a public function, but in the internal scope. That's why access control is so important. At the end of the day, it's all about the risk. And access control helps us manage this risk. Cool. Let me do this again. All good, but we still have a warning in the test target. Let's see what this is. We have our delegate spy implementing both protocols, and right. we don't need this anymore yes. because yeah. the flow now talks directly to a quiz delegate, has no knowledge of a router, so we can get rid of it. We can also get rid of the methods. Let's run the tests. Booyah. So this is a prime example of what we were talking about before, where we don't do the change immediately. Rather, we add the new thing the new type, the new behavior, and when no one else is using the old behavior or the old type and all the tests pass and we don't have any build warnings or errors, we can go and delete that. Exactly. No one is using the API anymore. Now we can delete it. That's one way of making changes without breaking existing yes. code. It's very counterintuitive when you first see it and especially you know when, when you start out your career or something like that. Why would you do that? Well, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Even though you have the compiler helping you and you have tests, instead of breaking everything and having build errors for an hour and getting overwhelmed, we do one thing at a time in tiny increments until we get where we want. Exactly. And we're never stuck. We are never stuck. That's important. And this is an exercise in responsibility as well, because it's not our code here that we're changing, you know, or rather I should say it's not only our code that we're changing. We're yes. changing other people's code as well, because this is a library and it's going to have clients and we want the best possible experience for the clients of this library as developers. So we keep the old behavior, we keep the old APIs, we deprecate it, and we even keep the tests. The behavior is covered. Absolutely. As long as we support the code, it is tested and we guarantee that it works. Absolutely, yes. Let's commit this. Remove redundant rotor conformance. Okay, what else? Should we make a global search for root? Yes, so it should be only on deprecated stuff. And looks like it is in the deprecated game file. Very nice. 
and in the game.swift that's deprecated as well. And in the old router. In the old router. Which is deprecated. Exactly. Perfect. Now we need to create a new API. Or should we have a look at the list first? Yeah, let's review the list. When you have a checklist, you know, you don't want it to grow too big, <laughs> right? Okay. We can move some deprecated components to a common file. And what should we do with the scoring function? That's out of scope so far. And remove hashable constraint again out of scope we don't have a new yes. api so move the precarious components okay let's see where we can move them so the router protocol can go to the new designated place for deprecated components first of all let's call this deprecated game to match the test mm -hmm. let's keep this consistency here and we can commit that renamed file to remind us the components are deprecated so what we could do here is to move the delegate first to a new file yeah let's create a quiz delegate file okay we can cut and paste so move quiz delegate to its own file mm -hmm. fantastic and now we can move the router to the deprecated game file. To keep everything in one file, so it's easier to remove in the future. Yes, exactly. And we don't need this file anymore. Yes, let's commit. Move router protocol to deprecated components file. Okay, they are all deprecated now, which means this item yeah, can go away. Fantastic, now new API. Okay. And we're not going to call it game anymore. Yes. <laughs> It was fine in the beginning when we had the idea of building this game and we just wanted to separate the business logic from the actual iOS targets. Now we want to abstract more, if you like. Yeah, and that's pretty much the evolution of the design. As we go, we learn more and we keep improving things. And we have our tests backing us up. We have the compiler helping us. But again, as soon as we make a library and we put it out there to the world, we need to care about the clients. Right, we could go there and just rename everything, change the APIs, and bump a version. It's up to you, but this is a nice way to be backwards compatible as much as you can. You know, sometimes the the changes are just too radical, you know, and you must break the clients. But if you don't have to, at least give it a try. It's not that hard. Absolutely. Okay, so let's start the new APIs. Let's create the new APIs. As we said, this is a quiz, so why don't we call it a quiz? Mm-hmm. And let's start with the test. As always. So quiz test. All right. And this basically is going to mirror the deprecated game test case now, where all the end-to-end -end testing is going to happen here as well, because the behavior of this library remains intact. However, we need to use the new names in the new types. So we can start by copy-pasting that. Ugh. <laughs> I know, I know. You know what? I wasn't even sure if I should say it, but... I think in this case, it's it's fine to do. We want to replace the game type with a quiz type. And then we want to, if you take a look at line 18, we don't want to have a start game function anymore because we want to get rid of a game specifier. Right, it can be just a start or something like that. Right, right. And again, we want to get rid of this type constraint here because this is a leaky implementation. Yes. This is because of the flow and the flow is internal. <laughs> Yes, exactly. So you're done with this tomato and next one we're going to implement the new APIs. Okay. Bye y'all.